Hi guys, this is Vineet and in this video we will discuss about how you can add data and log files to an existing database inside SQL Server. Before we proceed ahead, uh, we really need some help and support from your end. So in order to do that, you may subscribe to my channel, uh, click on the subscribe button and hit on the bell notification icon and select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future videos. Please uh, do ask your friends to subscribe to my channel as well if, in case you find the content uh, of this channel useful. And there are some points to remember. Uh, watch this video till the end uh, to gain better clarity of the concept. If possible for you, please watch this video twice and perform the exercises in your uh, lab environment. And we would like to know your thoughts regarding our videos, so please share your comments. Now let's go back to our topic which is how you can add uh, data and log files to a database in SQL Server. Let's go to notes quickly. So basically there are some important points. A data and log file cannot be added while a backup is running in the background. So keep this in mind. If any backup activity is going on in the background, you will not be able to add any data or log files. And a maximum of 32,767 files and the same number of file groups can be specified for each database. And we will cover two demos here. So one demo is using the SQL Server Management Studio where I will show you how you can add files, the data file and the log data file and another demo is on using the transact sql statement so let's go to the environment uh, i'm inside sql server connected to our default instance so here we had created in one of our earlier exercises a sample db so what i will do i will show you the properties using the sql server management studio and show you the section where you can add files so let's go to properties, expand the properties window. So there's a section for files here where we see a primary data file which is sampledb.mdf and another file which is sampledblog.ldf. So there are two files defined for this database. So we are on the files page now to add any data or transaction log file, what we can do, we can do add. It will add an additional row where we can specify the logical name of the file, the size, the auto growth settings, where it will get stored and the actual file name with extension and EF. So you can do this by clicking on the add buttons. For now I'm removing it. Let me remove. So while adding the file, so for example, here you can select the file groups. If you want to create a new file group, you can create it uh, here right now. So file group can be specified while you're adding a file. And Transaction log files, let's talk, uh, talk about the transaction log files. The file group is not applicable for transaction log files. And uh, transaction log cannot be put in file groups. So this row is for the log file and uh, here we see the file group is not applicable to the transaction log files. So next column is to specify the initial size of the file. We had discussed this earlier as well. And uh, it is generally recommended to make the data file as large as possible uh, based on the maximum amount of data you expect in the database. So from beginning, estimate the size, maximum size of your database, uh, what your database will grow up to. And accordingly, set the initial size instead of expanding the files later. We can perform the initial size. We take it as maximum whatever we feel the data to be in the future. Now we are done with initial size. 
and next section is for auto growth settings you can specify whether it grow by percentage or in megabytes and whether growth will be unlimited or we want to restrict it to a specific uh, size in MBs that can be specified here so I think okay let's talk about the maximum size of the file uh, we're talking about here so there's one point to remember here the maximum database size is uh, determined by the amount of disk space available on the system and the license of the SQL Server you are using. So in certain um, versions like SQL Server Express, you cannot uh, grow file beyond 10 GB in size. So the size of the file, the maximum database size is determined by the amount of disk space available and the licensing limits uh, determined by the version of SQL Server that you are using. And uh, next, the path is specified for the location. We want to put the files. And by default, the data and transaction logs are put on the same drive path, same drive and path to accommodate single disk systems. Um, this type of mechanism may not be useful or optimal for production environment. So in production environment, it is generally recommended to keep uh, data and log files separately, on possibly on a separate drive. So on a single drive system, you can keep them on a single location. But yeah, if you are using multiple drives, you can reap the benefits uh, by placing files on uh, separate drives. So we are done with the GUI mode, how you can add files uh, for any secondary data files extension will be ND, L, NDF. So let me remove this row here. Now I will show you how you can add file using the transact SQL statement. Uh, we will uh, do a actual practical demo. So let's open up a new query and select master as the database because we are making modifications inside the sample db so along with me write some code statements so what we are doing here is altering a database which is sample db all right and we are adding a file group So let me mark this file group as test file group one. All right. Again, we are altering the same database. So first alteration is to add the file group. Second alteration is to add a file. So let me add a file to this. So file details can be specified within these braces. Let's provide the logical name of the file. I'm naming it as a uh, test file one. This is the logical name. And put the provide the physical file name. So let's uh, go to the location. So on C drive, program files, Microsoft SQL Server. Your instance and a SQL folder data. This is the folder where file will be there. So these two are the files for sample DB. We will just we are just creating it some test files. So under this folder, what I'm doing is I'm creating a secondary data file. So so I'm marking it as test at one dot ndf should be the extension of any secondary data files put a comma let's specify the size for this file so i'm putting it as 5 mb max 
and I'm putting max size of this file, restricting it here to 100 MB. And we are specifying file growth settings as by 5 MB it should grow in case the initial file size is filled. And we are done. So we want to add multiple files to it. So let's see. Uh, put a comma here. Specify the second file details within this uh, bracket subbraces specify the logical file name so in this case I'm creating a test file to file name we can specify as uh, this path we will just change the name of the file just at 2.10df is what I'm using rest of the items I'm copying it out from the above so Initial size will be after test file two. You need to put comma. Initial size is five MB. Max size is hundred MB. File growth is five MB in the five MB increments. So next come if you want to put these two files on a certain file group. So you can specify it with two clause. So we can specify as uh, create these files to file group. Uh, we had created a file group test fg1 here so let's put it here so that's it this is the total code that we need to run to create two secondary data files uh, on a particular test file group one execute these statements so this is done you can verify that by using the properties of the database go to the file section you will see two files are created and they are put on test file group one with the initial size and auto growth increment settings uh, and the path of the files and the, along with the logical file names so this is how you add the secondary data files to to a particular database so log files we are not adding it here uh, so we are just fine with uh, the secondary data files for this video for now I hope you like this video guys please uh, click on the like button if you really like this video please share this video with your friends uh, in case you find it useful for them as well please uh, we need your support uh, please subscribe to my channel hit on the bell notification icon select all notifications to get uh, notifications regarding all my future videos I uh, thank you once again for watching this video you have a wonderful day ahead thanks